kind of thrown up a prayer first thing this morning. Water temps have really cooled here in South Louisiana. In fact, I just looked and it's 66 degrees right here. That's right in that sweet spot for speckled trout to hit topwater baits. So I kind of made a long run into a cove here. Got some beautiful water. I'm gonna make a quick pass and see if I can get some blow ups on top. I'm really eager to catch my first topwater fish of the year. But if that doesn't happen, you know I got some other alternatives. It's just that time of year, the fishing is just so good right now. All right, I'm starting this morning with the hideously ugly, but world famous <laughs> green bone chrome she dog. This thing is ugly, but man, is it a fish killer. Oh, first cast, first cast speckled trout. It's not a giant, but it's definitely a key. Oh, he came off. He would have been a keeper. Oh, heartbreaking. This is about a 17, 18 inch fish, but he pulled the hooks. Well, it's probably a good thing because I would have had the first cast curse. Let's see if he's got any friends. Man, you hate losing the first fish. Ah. Oh. Now, I don't really have an ideal topwater situation this morning. The tide is falling, which I love this time of year. But as a general rule, when you're fishing these flats, throwing topwater baits, you want a rising tide. Every other condition, however, is perfect. The water's beautiful and perfect water temperature. That might've been our last blow up. Man, I hope not. Oh, there's one. There's one. Oh, stay on. That's a good trout. Stay on. Stay on, big boy. Come on. Come on. Stay on. Look, this isn't going to set a record. Trust me. But it's a nice trout. I'd love to lay my hands on him. I'll tell you that. Pretty, pretty, pretty fish. Come on, big boy, stay on. All right, all right. Look at that fish, beautiful, beautiful speckled trout. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. Man, that really, really, really gets my blood pumping. That is just so awesome. Beautiful speckled trout on a topwater bait. It took this fall a little while to get going, but man, it is crazy now. Now we've got far more wind than what was in the forecast. Probably northeast about 12 or so. And that's why I'm throwing this she dog. Such a loud, obnoxious bait. It just works really well in windy conditions. And less wind, I'd be throwing a Bill Lewis stutter step or a Matrix mullet. Two very good baits. Definitely better in calmer conditions, though. Sun's about to pop up. It's behind some clouds right now. And I tell you what, it might kill my topwater bite. <laughs> but it's going to make me feel a lot better because it's chilly this morning. I'm definitely underdressed. Tell you what, you can tell the fishing's gotten good. I'm out here on a Monday. <laughs> And there are boats zipping absolutely everywhere. You'd think it'd be the deadest fishing day of the week, but not today. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous topwater videos, I gotta give my son Joel credit for discovering this bait. It's hideously ugly. No manufacturer would ever make, this one's missing an eye, <laughs> would ever make something that looks like this. But uh, man, it's just a fish catcher. In my view, it looks just like a, well, it doesn't look just like anything, but fish mistake it for a wounded mullet. A very, oh, 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 there's one. This is not a giant. This is not the fish of the day. He's a keeper, but barely. All right, get the pliers for him. Cause I don't want to hook in the hand. Now my hope for the day is to find some bayou somewhere draining into a lake where the specks are stacked up. It's not a guarantee you'll find one this time of year, but this is when it happens. All right, 
This boat's passing right over where we're fishing, so time to roll. All right, so unfortunately, this ferocious northeast wind is preventing me from fishing the miles of bayous. All the lakes are just way too rough for my boat, but that's okay. We still got this falling tide, and that opens up a lot of opportunities in the marsh as well. Obviously, fishing trenasses like that, and also the bends of bayous. So I've tucked back into the marsh, hoping this wind will die, but until it does, I'm gonna target some reds, bass, and speckled trout, because everything's in the marsh, and with this clean water and falling tide, it should all be biting. What you was? What you was? Don't, 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 don't. All right, this is an absolutely beautiful bend. <laughs> There's got to be some trout under here. I just checked my depth finder at seven feet. I'm going to run up over here and fish back to this. Water's flying through here. There's trout somewhere in here. There's got to be. All right, we're in position. Let's see if we can get a bite. I felt you. I felt you. There's one. There's oh. There he is. There's a fish. All right. All right. Redfish, not a trout. <laughs> Shoot. Baby red. Where's your speckled brother? You what's been hitting me? You what's been hitting me, huh? There's a fish. There's a fish. What are you, speckled trout? You're staying down. Nope, you're a trout. There we go, big boy. All right. There's a trout right in the mouth of this little pond where it meets this bayou that we stopped to fish. Keeper speckled trout, he will make the cut. Let's see if he was a lone ranger. Oh, he was not a lone ranger. Oh, man. There he is. There he is. Oh, came off. It's all right. There's a few fish there. Throwing a holy jolly matrix shad on a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. I think it's about five or six feet where I'm throwing. That's what it seems like. Taking that bait a little while to get down, but not too long. Oh, what, what are you, redfish? I don't think you're a speckled trout. You about ripped the rod out of my hands. Tell you what, he's fighting weird, almost like a drum. But I think he's a red. Or a foul hook something, let's see what he is. <laughs> a foul hook mullet, look at that. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> you big dummy. All right. I'll let you go. A little bit of a war wound, but you'll be fine. It'll heal. Don't get anywhere near these. These aren't for you. All right, so I've got three bites on three casts and then foul hooked that mullet. I've made about three casts since then and haven't gotten a bite. So what I want to do is go back on the other side. I have no idea how much water's in this little pond and fish back this way with the wind. I'll be fishing against the tide, which I really like. Plus this pond looks pretty appealing for bass and reds. So let me do that. I'm gonna check my depth finder, see how much water we got here. All right, so what I discovered is there's about a two and a half foot rise out here. The water goes from four and a half feet right at the mouth of this opening down to about seven, seven and a half feet. And that's where those trout were holding. So I'm gonna let it settle down a little bit. I'm gonna fish this pond for bass and reds. See if I can run across anything in here. And either way, I will hit that again on the way out and try and get a few more trout. This episode of Marsh Mad Mass On brought to you by H&H &H Lore Company and by Bill Lewis and by Seto New Orleans. 
and by Versamax Courts, and by Sportsman's Outfitters. It's a nice little neck down coming up up here. That looks appealing as well. I'm gonna angle toward that. There's a fish. Look at that speckled trout in this pond. In this pond on my matrix hog. That was unexpected, but not disappointing. Nice 16 inch fish, beautiful fish. We will take him. Now this matrix hog is not what you would normally think of as a, a trout bait, but I've caught a few on it. This of course is a Kashonda Lay color. It's a sleek, slender bait that has a lot of tail action. So of course trout like that. And he was out off the grass in this little channel. Same channel those other fish were holding in. Here's our neck down. Here's a nice little trinas next to it. Both look very tempting. So I guess we'll hit them both. Oh boy, is that pretty. There's gotta be some fish in here. We'll poke our noses in here. Maybe we'll see a redfish. That would be fine. There's a fish. Where are you, redfish? <sighs> nice, keeper red, beautiful fish. Right at the mouth of this little pond. He hit our Kashonda Lay Matrix Shad. I'm sorry, Matrix Hog. About a, an 18 inch fish. Beautiful, look at how copper he is in that pretty water. I really should get up on my my brewing cooler, give me a little bit of elevation, help me to see these fish. If there are any more in here. Water's definitely pretty enough. Now I'm not the world's best sight fisherman. I don't do it a ton, but when nature gives you these conditions, sometimes you just gotta take advantage of it. And I just stumbled on this little pond. It looks really good. Right now I'm heading into the wind and the sun, but when I get to the edge of this pond, I'll let, it, let the wind push me back and I'll have the sun on my back kicking up some bass. Man, this water's gorgeous. If there's a red in here, he can't hide. I don't know if I'll catch him, but I'll see him. All right, made it through the whole pond. Didn't see one. So now we'll go back to blind casting. All right, this pond looks really good if we wanted to sight fish, but I think we're gonna work our way back and go back and hit that mouth where we caught those few trout. We'll fish our way out through that neck down that we had seen previously. I'll tell you one thing I'm shocked about is that we haven't run across any bass today, given the fact this water's falling, how pretty it is. I mean, we do have a, a clear bluebird sky, certainly not prime for bass, but still, I think we would've caught one or two. Man, this neck down looks really good. <laughs> give this a little bit of attention. They got some water right here. I bet there's some trout in this little neck down. It's deeper than I thought. Oh yeah, that's at least six feet. Incredible. Just incredible. Let me throw a matrix real quick. Speckle trout already. Look at this, first cast. Oh, oh, he came off. That's all right, that's all right. It's a good sign. There's a fish. Oh, it's a smaller one. He might keep. He's not as nice as the one we just lost. Yeah, I think he's too little. He'll grow up, big boy. Bite next year.
There's a fish. There's a fish. That's a keeper. If he stays connected. All right, there we go. Now we're on a little bit of a bite. About a 13 inch speckled trout. Still legal in Louisiana. All right. Now we're just in that little neck down that we had seen from that area we had caught those trout. I came in through the back way because I went through this little trinas, this little run out right here. And now I'm coming back through this way, heading toward that area where we caught those fish. We'll kind of fish this until it plays out and then go check that out. Now I'm fishing against a pretty significant current, which as I mentioned in my last video, I really like to do, but sometimes you battle your own eagerness and you don't let that bait fall back to the bottom between twitches. It really costs you. You gotta be patient fishing this way. There he is. Oh. There he is, came back. Oh, look at that, a shrimp jumped. Definitely a keeper, definitely a keeper. He spooked the shrimp on his way up. Oh, that's a good trout. Come on, dude, quit playing around. Quit your playing. Two future fillets, beautiful fish, loving. Look how fat, thick, thick, thick fish. Just, man, just awesome, love fall. All right, this should tell you how easy the fish are to find right now in our marshes. I mean, I'm fishing areas totally away from anything else I've ever fished, and I've discovered a pretty decent trout bite. If you're willing to move around and actually fish and pay attention to your surroundings, it's really hard not to do well this time. Oh, shoot. <laughs> not to do well this time of year, especially when you have good conditions. Obviously, you have terrible conditions. It's going to make things tough on anybody, but we got some pretty good conditions today. Now the reason I'm going with Holy Jolie is because of this water clarity. It's just fantastic. This is such a good clean water color. I got a lot of confidence in it. There he is. Oh, my line dropped him on a rod tip some kind of way. That stinks. But we got him in. <laughs> Another keeper trout. Again, these fish are not giant, obviously. This is about a 13 incher, maybe a little bit more than that. But we can probably sit here for the next hour or so and catch a limit. There's a fish. That's a trout. That's a good trout. All right, all right. Chunky speck, how about that? Like to have him. I don't think these fish are schooled up in here. I think they just happen to be in here for the same reason. I think they're using this funnel to ambush bait, but they're real loosely scattered throughout here. I think they're just running around chasing bait and occasionally running across my bait. Usually when the fish are schooled, you can determine a, a point or a pocket or something that they're collected in. But that's not the case here. They're just really scattered. I'm getting bites all throughout here without any real rhyme or reason. Oh, shoot. Like right there. Oh, there's a fish. First cast with the cork. Are you a trout? You sure feel like it. Why haven't you come up? Yep, you're a trout. You're a trout. First cast with the cork. Fishing a nice, long, about four foot leader. Looks like the water there is about six feet. That's about perfect. Let's see if it was a fluke.
Not a fluke. Not a fluke. Not a keeper. <laughs> There's a trout. There's a trout. Good night. Why haven't you come up? You got some guns, boy. You got some guns. You're not even all that big. 16 inches or so. Man, you are feisty. There he is. Small keeper. What a keep. Well, it's not as small as I thought. Better fish than I thought. About a 15 incher. Just a weakling. That's a nice trout. Well, maybe not so nice, but a keeper. Yes, indeed. What is it about these fish that make you love them so much? I don't know what it is. I don't know, but I love them. Man, what an awesome day with awesome weather, a nice falling tide, clear water, Took us a little bit to find the fish, but once we found them, it was crazy good. That's just how it is this time of year, particularly on a falling tide. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.